guest today is Paul McDonald. He is a retired professor emeritus from psychology at the University of New Brunswick in Fredericton, specialist in autism spectrum disorder, and has a musical side to him too, which we'll explore later on in the show. Again, I think applied behavior analysis is good because essentially what we do is we identify the target behaviors that are appropriate for this child right now. And we then go about figuring out, okay, how are we going to teach them? And we're going to get the job done. And, and so that's important, I think. But meaningful education is important, I think. Um, so, you know, uh, so I think, I think the goal of inclusion is, 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 is absolutely wonderful, you know, of course. I remember when I first came to New Brunswick, and I was working with the, what was at that time called the Canadian Association for the Mentally Retarded, which is now the Association for Community Living, right? But um, at that time, um, I was sort of like just interested in helping out with the association, and they would send me out to visit families occasionally. And, uh, and often I would get to a home and there was a child there who wasn't going to school, who who was isolated in the back part of the house. Good heavens, it was yeah. <laughs> horrific, you know. The child was never taken out yeah. in public and so on. So they're, they're not that long ago, the world was not as inclusive, for sure. And an individual like that had a very, very um, meager existence, in a sense. And so, you know, uh, it's really wonderful that, that we do have more inclusion, that we're getting there. But at the same time, we have to lose, not lose sight of the fact that we have to teach appropriately. We have to teach in ways that actually result in this child learning. You know, I think yeah. that's the key. In, in one of your quotes from some of the old news stories, oh, yeah. was, uh, I want to use the phrase center of excellence, but it seems to me somewhere one of the paragraphs, assuming you were quoted accurately, mm. um, was that we need centers that do that appropriate teaching for that phase in that student's career or life or learning curve. To then, you know, their integration point might come mm. at another spot down mm -hmm. the spectrum rather mm -hmm. than right away. Yeah, um, and and it's long. You know, it, this isn't new. It's, I'm curious to learn where the breakthrough would be. Yeah, there's always that dynamic about systemic change. Right. Um, having points of entry where something did shift, which is amazing. So inclusion does accomplish that. Mm -hmm. But now in practice, it's mm -hmm. found that we're not helping these people as best we could, right. which almost goes back to that center of excellence, which the Canadian Association of Community Living might say, well, now you're segregating them again. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that segregation, in a way, is no different than any other segregation where you're putting a group of people together to help them to their mm -hmm. best ability. Mm -hmm. And their integration point's actually going to come over here, yeah. not, not here. Yeah. 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 So should we go to building... Um, and as an aside, I've heard stories about not having enough equipment. Um, this is that that expensive in that school, but every school can have one of those um, machines or tools or resources. So should we be thinking about creating spots where, where they, there's a congregation of skill sets, talent, mm -hmm. to help them through that window, and then they integrate in different ways? Or does it um, need to be in the school system? And in no, I think it needs to be in the school system. And if we're talking about the schools, yeah, specifically, uh, I mean, I, 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 and I think we're getting it. I think that's what we're doing. You know, okay. that uh, I think, I think it's, it's, we're not there yet, totally, but clearly we're on the road. We're training people. It's all about training. Like the, the I think the key here is that, is that you know you can have people with, uh, want to help people with autism. Uh, learn, but they may not be very good at it, and we do know how to teach uh, uh, effectively, so that uh, the skills that we've selected uh, will that they will learn them as well as they possibly can. And so, I think it's I think it's really important to uh, put the emphasis on training, uh, providing uh, ongoing training for teachers uh, for sure. And uh, I don't think we need to create separate centers necessarily. I, and I'm wondering if that particular quote was related to discussion about adult services, you know. It, Maybe. It was probably that, as opposed to with the schools themselves, yeah. and certainly with the preschool. Yeah. And I was riffing a bit with your Boston mm. story or your Massachusetts story. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that sounds like it's a center of excellence of some sort. 
It was, yeah, yeah, and and certainly they they do an amazing job, and they work with the schools. I mean, they they you know the kids leave the leave the center and go back to the schools yeah. with support, yeah. and that can work very well. It certainly can work absolutely. So the smallest yeah. to be had. Yeah, and I think it's it's uh, it's probably the, the case that we can do this in the context of the schools, but I think we need the resources to do it, and I think it's a good investment. Mm -hmm. and again, I think it's. It is not, you know. It's it, again. You have to pay up front, but uh, but what you get out of that is you get you get a much more effective uh, um, system, and the products, the outcome for the individuals is so much better. You know? And and that storyline is very very similar to the housing first strategy, mm. um, where slowly we're coming around to a, inverting the pyramid. <laughs> yeah. And seeing if we spend the money here, the return is going to be magnified over there. For those that have the econom economy as more as their primary yeah. driver, the, the counterbalance yeah. to the uh, economy or the financial argument is the sole argument. Mm -hmm. um, there's something special about all of this that nurtures the provincial soul mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's a form of caring mm -hmm. that works. As Absolutely, yeah, that's true. So do you have a, a feel for that? Can you share? Because somewhere along your career, um, you're not just helping with cognitive skills and socialization mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. There's something in that person's soul that's being nurtured mm. as well, and mm -hmm. that in turn nurtures the whole provincial soul. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, certainly, it, are you thinking about the individuals with autism themselves and everyone? I, I want to mush yeah. it all. Yeah, all yeah, right. right yeah. So when you do something good, sure, you feel it. Yeah. So you don't need to analyze it uh, financially. You don't no, no, yeah, well, for sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, if you look at it from the perspective of families, I think we need to do that because if uh, if you have a family that have a child with, let's say, moderately uh, impaired level of of, uh, of autism, um, and they're going to have a lot of challenges uh, to meet. Uh, some of them are financial, some of them are social, some of them, you know, there's lots of challenges. Um, and, and so when we provide intervention, what we do is we enable that whole family to have a better life, a much better life, you know. And, I mean, little things like uh, we were, uh, I'm associated with Autism Connections Fredericton here. I'm on the board. And uh, anyway, one of the programs we had last summer, which was really good, was a bicycle riding program. And uh, so what we did is uh, we had an occupational therapist who was wonderful who uh, had a, a program she developed uh, to teach children. So we only had about six kids, I think, uh, come out for this. Uh, I know that several of the kids who came out uh, did learn to ride uh, as a result of this. And, then, and the parents said, you know, this is really amazing because we could never go on a family outing on a bicycle before. We had to stay home, or they were, you know, their lives were limited. Now, all of a sudden, the child can ride the bike, and they're actually able to go out on the trail and, and as a family. And it's just that kind of thing, you know, that is uh, liberating and, and so exciting. I think to see, I, I love that, you know, those kinds of things. So we need to, you know, it's a little kind of course that we're providing there. We're going to do that one again. It worked really well. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, Maybe to we have about ten minutes left, hmm. so maybe to take a turn in a different direction. And okay. another one of your hats is the Lansdowne House concerts. Oh yes. Now, actually, we could segue it with uh, nurturing the soul with music. Okay. Yeah. Be because yeah. The, yeah. the, you know, the nature of music will reach yeah. everyone. So it, whether yeah. it's the autistic spectrum or the non-autistic spectrum, absolutely, the way yeah. it resonates in in our bones. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So um, music is an amazing. Uh, experience and uh yeah and uh, my wife and i liz uh, we we really enjoy music so that's why we've embraced this <laughs> yeah and and quick intro for the audience lansdowne house concerts uh, invites a musician into their home about 50 people get to come um, pay a nominal fee and you have a very intimate setting at your house mm -hmm. um and and it's great for the performer it's great mm -hmm. for the audience supports local music scene yeah so um well, What's that like to have all the strangers <laughs> come into your house? It's good. It's good. Uh, I, I think we're the kind of people who we don't want to have a mausoleum for a home. We want to have it open to people, you know, and we, we really uh, enjoy uh, uh, that kind of thing. We enjoy meeting the people that come to the concerts, but we also enjoy meeting the artists as well. And uh, it's just a win-win kind of thing, you know, because we, we, we get a lot out of it. I mean, we... 
we love music, we love the artists, we love to know about the music business, uh, we, uh, we like to see people enjoying themselves. And, we, and I, I guess, you know, one of the reasons why we did it was we were interested in listening to music in what we call a listening environment. So we wanted to be in a place, it's sort of like the playhouse, you know, where you can actually hear the music. We want to be able to hear every word, every note. We want to see what the artist is doing with the instrument, you know. And so we want to, we want to, we want to, a lot of the artists, all of the music, that we, all of the musicians that we have are singer-songwriters. That is, they all write their songs. We don't do cover bands. Uh, not that we, we don't appreciate cover bands, we do, but... But it's that we have to limit it somehow. We can yeah, and, only and, do so many. So yeah. we, we thought our our focus would be on on the artists who actually write the music and perform it. You know, and uh, there's an enormous number of artists in Canada. It's amazing. We get we get over two hundred requests a year to perform at Lansdowne Concert Series. And, and how many um, events are you able to And we to were able provide? to hold, uh, well, we, we're sort of aiming at one a month, but we've always gone over that limit, so it's sort of more like <laughs> two a month. So we're, we're probably around uh, 18 to 20 a year. Wow, out of um, 200 requests. Yeah, out of 200 requests. So, so you can see from that that we have to be limiting it in order to do that. But all of the artists who do write to us, almost all of them are excellent. You know, it's really impressive because we listen to them all. We, yeah. we, we listen to them and we decide. You know, is this somebody that a is the timing is right, or, or is the you know maybe in a few cases it might be the genre. You know, like sometimes we listen and then we say, well, okay, that's good. It's good music, but it's not what we want to do. You know, yeah. and so we get to choose because we're running the concert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was yeah. also knowing your audience a bit too, yeah. or your membership. Yes, it you is. Know? Yeah. You kind of know well, they might not be a good fit for our game. Yeah, we had a we had a a cappella group uh, last year, and we weren't sure whether we should go there. But we listened to them; we thought they were so fantastic. That was a four a four forty, yeah, and they were marvelous. They were so good, and they uh, and and it was well worth having them. I mean, it was they were terrific. <laughs> yeah. So this also, and how many years? Sorry, we started that in February twenty eleven. Okay. And so we've done, and the first the first four years we were doing. Every time an artist came, we would do two weekend, two two concerts, with the artist. So they would get to do one night with us and one night at our my brother and sister in law's place, and so we would actually do two concerts. And the result of that is we got to over a hundred concerts fairly quickly. Uh, now uh, it's plateaued a little bit, but uh, we're um, we're around one hundred and fifty concerts in something like that. I think, yeah. My goodness. That also puts you in touch in a very intimate way with the music scene hmm. um, from a di very different door. Like yeah. hosts, there aren't many hosts right. for music. And um, the impression is that there's a lot going on musically hmm. in Atlantic Canada. Yeah, there is. Yeah. <laughs> there so, really is. Yeah. So can you share that perspective that hmm. you have on that? Well, we go to the East Coast Music Awards usually and, and we... Uh, we go there because it's fun to go, but but we also go because it's a good opportunity to hear new musicians, ones we, from the Atlantic provinces we haven't heard yet, you know, and uh, and yeah, I mean they're they're just there's a huge number of uh, incredible artists. I it amazes me because of the level of talent why these people are not more famous than they actually are, you know, it, it, they're just so darn good. And uh, they write such beautiful songs. They perform them so well. Not only did they do that, they're usually humorous and funny on stage. They're, you know, they're eloquent. They're, you know, uh, very entertaining and wonderful people. And, you know, by the way, they all they all they all stay with us, uh, stay overnight. Most of them do. And uh, unless, of course, they live in Fredericton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, most of them stay with us. And and they're they've all been incredible guests. You know, uh, just wonderful people to uh, get to know. Um, but yeah, there's, there, I mean, I think in the Atlantic provinces, there's just a, a, a we, we have a very robust group of artists here who, um, are as good as any in the world, if not probably better in so many ways. Yeah. You know? it, well, yeah. it almost feels like a yeah. pendulum, assuming the pendulum is yeah. the right model. Yeah. It, it's swinging back again. Yeah. Because it, you know, in national identity, Atlantic Canada is known for the kitchen parties and the music yeah. and such. Um, we're we kind so, of moved it into the living room. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sort of. You know, and, well, and, basement in our case. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we're so dominated by uh, American culture, at least in mass media. Yeah, um, that there's no wiggle room for yeah. the next generation of talent to have a venue to to 
show its stuff. There's that, a lot of people that 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 I'll meet, you know, in town, say, just you know, who who will they'll go to some huge American band that comes comes through or some large, you know, and uh, who's playing in Moncton or something. They'll go and stand in the crowd, and you know, and, 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 you know, there's a whole experience there with that, yeah. which I've never totally understood. <laughs> or you could go and hear an equally probably in many cases better performance mm -hmm. not necessarily better ours because those ours are very good too of course yeah, but yeah. but it's just that it's the it's the way they're being presented you know and, and it's it's loud it's noisy it's it's crowded it's it's yep. you know get you get rained on i mean you know you're, you're older now paul I, I guess that's it maybe that's what i'm talking about here <laughs> no yeah. no but, but I, I mean if you just... want if, if it's music you want to hear if it, if that's your goal if that's what you're interested in then you know uh we the in the Atlantic province we have some amazing artists that yeah. should be heard yeah. but, but it seems like there's, maybe it's full circle maybe a circle is a better analogy than mm. a pendulum because Atlantic Canada kitchen parties there's mm. an intimacy to that yeah um, then the big concert stuff kicks in inundated with American culture you know Anglos anyway yeah. um, there's a lot of attention to what's going on on e-talk tonight or yes that exactly sort of thing. Yeah, yeah meanwhile in the past 20 years yeah. there's an awful lot of music happening yeah that hasn't gotten attention that's their, right their platform would be social media yeah um, but social media is you can't say saturated because it's mm. infinite you yeah. Know? yeah but at least you have a way of putting your stuff out there yeah. more than just releasing vinyl or releasing mm. a disc. Um, That's true. Well, yeah, for sure. Spotify now and all, all sorts of... Uh, yeah, and, and some past that. guests from Tom Swift, a sleepy driver, mm. being on, you know, they, they'll talk about that end of their work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then you come along with these house concerts, mm. which is personal, intimate, and mm -hmm. it's like it's coming full circle. Yeah, no, yeah. No, you don't need to go yeah. through this technology. We need to go back to community. Yeah, again. yeah. If the community is can support the music. Actually, it's interesting. And as 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 CDs start to phase out, what's left is is live performance. You know, and what is really wonderful is live performance. I don't think there's anything really quite like that. You know, because what you get on when you have an artist on the stage, you get uh, you get more than just the song. You know, you get the context, the stories, the back line. You get to see the expression on the artist's face. You get to see the energy. You know what I mean. It's 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 just so dynamic seeing live performance, and we really love that. Yeah, absolutely. This is an unfair question, but it's fun to play. Mm. Um, not your favorite, but do you have some highlights? Of some of those house concerts. Mm. Do, do you have you know? Oh, this happened, and then the crowd had the hair go up in the back of their neck, or yeah. or this happened, and this performer had them laughing in their seats between songs. Yeah. Do you have some personal highlights? <laughs> Oh well, there, there's um, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I was thinking of an artist who who came and uh, was singing a uh, uh, song about. Um, uh, and this was was very interesting. It was an intimate sort of song about uh, uh, the first night that a couple had lived together, and one of the members of the couple passed away. And then uh, this is about the first night that that person was alone. And it happened that in the audience there were several people who were exactly in that situation. So, you know, yeah, so that was, that was a very moving. Uh, but he handled it beautifully, you know. I mean, it was so sensitive. It was really, really great. And uh, so that was that type of thing. And then I remember, I remember the night that we had... Uh, Ron Hines uh, come probably about five months before he, he died. And uh, in fact, he came two nights. He came, uh, it was about a week apart. So he did a concert one weekend and then he went away and then he came back the next weekend to another one. And we sold them up, both of them. It was Ron Hines and a lot of people came. And um, it was just a very moving experience to hear, you know, him singing. And I think everybody now is that we're never going to see this guy again. You know, it's just the last concert we're going to see of Ron Hines. And he, I mean, he worked to the last day of his life practically, you know. So um, anyway, it was a real joy to have him come. And uh, just to, to feel the, the emotion in the room that night, you know. But it's not all sad. Right? I mean, a lot of them are, are very upbeat and uh, sure. voices. Uh, and we have some, uh, one of our, our first artists ever was uh, Ian Sherwood from Halifax. 
and Ian is all energy, all exciting. Uh, he's he's just the ultimate consummate performer, and he's come back many times. So when you go to those concerts, you know it's just it's fantastic. You know, yeah, they most of them are, are very upbeat and yeah, you know, like that. You know, great. Yeah. It's time for us to wrap up. Okay. Any thoughts to send us out? Ah, uh, well, I've enjoyed being here. Great. Thank you for inviting me. I don't have any other thoughts at the moment. I think, but uh, um, but uh, I'm um, I'm pleased with what's happened in New Brunswick uh, in terms of autism. Uh, I know we got a lot more to go. The one thing we didn't really address is adult services. And uh, that is the area that we're working on quite a lot right now. Um, and uh, I, I think that we, we have a great need in that field. So it's, it's like we have, have this really Cadillac program operating, you know, at the preschool level. And then we have uh, an under construction model going on in the school system, right? And then we have really very little at the level of adult services. So that is where the focus, that's the new frontier. That's, that's where we have to be putting our effort, I think. And uh, uh, so uh, we, we, had a, uh, we had a workshop last uh, September. Uh, Greg McDuff from, uh, is a psychologist from, um, from uh, New Jersey at the Princeton Child Development Institute, and he came and talked for two days about the programs that they operate there for adults, and uh, which are excellent. Uh, we wouldn't be doing what they did necessarily, but it was a good kickstart to the whole, uh, the whole process of looking at adult services and figuring out what do we actually need to have in New Brunswick. Here. But I think we've done creative things at the preschool level and at the school level. We need to do creative things for the adults in our province. And that's going to be a challenge, but I think it's you know, something we can do. Thanks so much for this. You're welcome. My pleasure. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.